Okay, so now please understand that it is possible to come up with hundreds of examples of when the government might use either fiscal policy or the monetary policy or both of them together to reach certain economic outcome. So I'm going to talk about just one example and I'll leave the rest up to you guys. So let's start with this scenario. We have a Y here and I here. This is our LM curve and this is our IS curve. And now this is a very, let's, let's take a very realistic example. Is that suppose, whichever government this is, you can think that this is suppose Bangladesh. You can think this is USA. You can think it is whatever country you want to. Suppose this country has been running a very high uh, balance deficit. So for the last five years, let's say for the last 10 years, the government has been spending more money than it has been earning. And they would like to reverse it. They would like to spend less and pay back some of the money it already owes to other people. So what is the solution? Uh, so let's go step by step. So, and uh, let me write this down here. So number one, so the government wants to lower deficit. So how do you lower deficit? The way of lowering deficit is either by increasing taxation or by lowering government expenditure. These are the only two ways in which a government can lower its deficit. Now, if notice that both these policies are what we will call a contractionary fiscal policy. And so if the government were to do that, the ice curve will shift to the left. So suppose that's what happens. We were at Y naught. Suppose that's 200 billion, but because of this contractionary fiscal policy, we end up at Y naught, which is let's say 100 billion. So the problem here, the government has achieved its first goal, which was to lower its deficit. It has lowered its deficit by increasing tax on the people and lowering how much money it spends. And so its deficit is, let's say, more or less under control. But the problem is in trying to do that, the output in the economy has fallen. So the government has accidentally, well, not accidentally, uh, as a side effect of what they were trying to do, the government has caused a recession in the economy. And as we all know, recessions are bad. We don't want that. So what's the solution here? Uh, as always, if you would like to, please pause the video, try to come up with a solution, and then you can come back and see what would be the right thing to do. Okay, so what the government has done, first thing is they have imposed a contractionary fiscal policy. But the problem is that the government wants, don't, do not want the output to fall. So what if the government do this as well? Along with a contractionary fiscal policy, suppose the government imposes expansionary monetary policy. So what is an expansionary monetary policy? An expansionary monetary policy is when the money supply is increasing. Money supply will increase when the interest rate in the economy is falling. So because the government has caused a recession, the central bank decides that they're going to lower the interest rate. When you lower the interest rate, the LM curve is going to go down and this is what's going to happen. So suppose this is the new LM curve. This has gone down. And so this is the new uh, output. Well, actually, let me draw this 
better. Because this is what we do. So this is the new, oh, we already had that. This is the new LM curve and see now, so interest rate was I naught. It is now I1 and output is back to what it used to be. So this is an example of when in order to reach the government's objectives, any one policy may not be enough and you may have to implement both fiscal policy and both monetary policy in tandem. So as I said, I was going to go through just one example. This is it. If you guys go through the book, there are two or three more examples and there will be a few more problems to solve in, in your assignment, which deals with similar problems like this. So that should clarify things. And uh, so this is all we're going to do with the ISLM model at this moment in this chapter. We'll be doing more later on, but this is the end of chapter five, which also means that this is the end of our short run analysis. So that means that next week, all the assignments are due. So assignment from chapter three, four, and five are due next week. And also our first quiz is due next week. And the syllabus is the, the first three chapters.